Hi everyone. So in today's lecture, we're going to be talking about understanding communities. <clears throat> and so what we'll be doing is we'll be going under, going over understanding various types of communities, um, communities across various levels of ecological levels of analysis, uh, and this idea of sense of community, an idea of social capital, both bonding and bridging types of social capital. And we'll be going under, going over understanding uh, community complexity. So, within community psychology, when we're discussing communities, we're typically talk, talking about two different types of communities, right? We're talking about locality-based communities or relational commu communities, um, and you can have relational communities within a particular locality. Um, but you cannot necessarily have a locality-based community within a relational community, if that makes sense. Um, so locality-based community has to do particularly with a, lo a geographic location, right? So it's where you live, uh, it's where you work, it's where you go to school, it's cities, it's rural areas, right? It's city blocks, it's your neighborhood. These are all places where Ge geography um, matters, right? So you could say something like, I'm an American, right? And then it then encompasses the geography of the United States. Uh, you could say, I'm a Washington Washingtonian. Washingtonite? Which one is it? You'll have to tell me in class. Um, or you can say, I'm a Seattleite, right? So, or you can say, I'm a Californian. Um, so that has particular, particularly geographic connotations to it. Um, whereas relational communities, those have to do with the relationships involved within that particular community, right? So it's not, you don't have a sense of community in terms of where you live, but it's who you interact with. Um, and what are some of the shared characteristics of those interactions? That's what matters in terms of a community. Now communities can go across levels of analysis, right? And both geographic as well as uh, relational communities can go across levels of analysis, right? So you can you can be part of a community that's an organization, right? So we're we're all part of the University of Washington community. That'll come that comes with various things like a symbol, like a mascot, like a sense of identity whenever the Huskies are playing football, right? Um, and that can bridge out. That can that can be part of localities. Uh, you can have uh, communities at, at various localities, like I said, neighborhoods, cities, um, states, and you can have communities at uh, macro systems as well, as well as micro systems. Um, but macro systems would include things like uh, a sense of uh, uh, ha being part of the uh, the democratic movement, for example, or being a Tea Party person, right? So these are all macro system communities and and uh, when you get to the macro systems they, they tend to become more relational because they're so spread out uh, but they can as I mentioned earlier they can still be uh, locality based right I'm an American for example now when you're getting into talking about communities McMillan McMillan and Chavez I think this article is is 1986 ish uh, Macmillan and Chavez uh, be started this idea, well, that they built on this idea um, from Seymour Saracen called sense of community. And they developed four elements of sense of community. That includes membership, influence, integration, and shared emotional connection. And we'll go into each of these specifically. So when you're part of a community, you're a member of a community, right? Membership has shared elements to it. Uh, when you're part of a community and you're a member of a community, members of those community ha communities have particular elements, right? So if we think about being a member of the University of Washington, um, there, are particularly boundary there are particular boundaries around that. And what that means is there are certain people who are included and excluded. Uh, and you and, and those boundaries are permeable, right? So some people can enter, some people can exit. Uh, but there's still that common boundary of being part of the University of Washington. 
uh, there are common symbols, right? So as as I mentioned, uh, all across Seattle, you can see the you know the purple and gold uh, W. Um, you can see the husky. Uh, all of those things are various symbols that that identify people with that particular co particular community. Um, there's emotional safety. So as a, a graduate of Michigan State University, right, I've been to places that like New Orleans, for example, where I'll see somebody with a Michigan State shirt or a Michigan State hat, and there's some sort of emotional safety there, right? There's a bond, there's something that we can discuss. And I'm sure you've had the same connection, right? If you go somewhere, if you go to California, for example, uh, and you see somebody with the University of Washington hat, um, you, can, you feel safe to strike up a conversation with them and, and have that sort of emotional safety. Um, <clears throat> personal investment as well, right? So you all invest your personal time getting an education, maybe going to various parties, interacting with people who are part of this community, the University of Washington community. And obviously a sense of belonging and identification, right? So these are the various things that sort of make up what membership in particularly com particular communities mean. The second element here is influence. And what influence means is influence is essentially the reciprocal interaction between members of the same community or members of the same group, right? So what reciprocation in this sense means is if I do something for you, you feel obligated to do something for me, right? So if I'm part of a uh, mutual help group, for example, and I agree to watch your children, you may feel obligated or a sense of uh, reciprocity toward uh, doing a favor for me uh, later on. Um, so this is different than, say, just paying a babysitter for uh, watching my children, right? I'm not within a community with that person, um, so that's strictly a monetary type of interaction. Um, and this sort of influence and this re reciprocity creates, creates a cohesion, a, a sort of sense of cohesion within that group. It, it coheres, it, it sort of brings people within that community together. The third element here is a fulfillment of needs. Uh, and what that means is it's not necessarily a monetary need, but it can be uh, both a, a monetary or um, emotional need or other type of need that you may have, right? So with that, you have uh, shared values uh, with other members of your community and you can sort of create shared goals together and maintain and develop those goals um, with one another um, to fulfill mutual obligations and mutual needs, right? In addition, um, when you are a member of a community, you can exchange resources with other members of that community. Um, and resource, ex resource exchanges in terms of tangible and intangible goods, right? Like I said, for example, um, watching somebody's children, they may feel obligated and exchange that sort of intangible resource with you of watching your children. And then finally, there's a shared emotional connection. As I mentioned earlier, right, if you see somebody with the University of Washington uh, shirt on when you're not in the Seattle area, you know, you may go up to them and, and talk to them and say, hey, I'm part of uh, UW as well, you know, um, depending on the moment, you may give them a high five or something weird like that, right? So there's some emotional bond that you have with that particular community. Um, so that's sort of the fourth element of sense of community. Now moving forward, um, Bordeaux and Col Coleman, so this is a different... Uh, a different framework of community and, and what community can bring and the resources that are exchanged within community. And uh, Bordeaux and Coleman developed this idea of social capital. And what social capital is, is it mostly describes the, the, the tangible and intangible or monetary and non-monetary resources that are exchanged among people who are within the same community. Um, and they define this at, at sort of the individual level, right? So they talked about how it can be beneficial for low-income school children, for example, 
um, to have social connections and social ties so that way resources can be exchanged and not just monetary but things like knowledge information um, those resources are, are sort of an intangible good based on the social relationships of people um, of individuals right and these are developed through social structures like schools so these places create opportunities uh, for people to interact um, and create opportunities for um, social exchanges to be created uh, Putnam and Paxson uh, developed this idea even further and brought it out to a higher level of analysis. So while Bordeaux and Coleman were talking specifically at the individual level, uh, Putnam and Paxton brought this out to greater levels of analysis and talked about the benefits of communities and societies. Uh, and Putnam defined social capital here as the network norms and trust that enable the pursuit of shared goals. Right, so you can sort of see the relationship here to uh, to sense of community, the idea of sense of community. Um, Paxton uses a similar sort of idea where um, she talks about the social networks and the norms of reciprocity and trustworthiness that arise from your social networks. Right, so again, it's those social interactions that you have that develop things like trust, uh, norms of reciprocity, uh, and trustworthiness. And so moving forward, um, in more recent literature, there's been two forms of social capital that have been talked about. One is bonding social capital, one is bridging social capital. And when we're talking about social capital within a larger community, bonding social capital is that it, it sort of makes sense with the name, right? Bonding. It's the, the social and emotional ties that people have that enable that trust within the group, right? And so this is this is sort of the trust and mutual commitment that people have within a particular community. Bridging social capital, on the other hand, and excuse me, let me take a step back. Bonding social capital is kind of the, the intra-community social capital, right? So within the community social capital. Bridging, on the other hand, is sort of the, the um, inter-community social capital or between community social capital. So these are the relationships between groups or communities that can provide access to various resources, right? So if you're looking for a job, for example, you may talk to your friend who knows somebody who owns a business who can, who can hook you up, who can give you a job, right? So this is a, an example of bridging social capital. You've bridged across a, a community into another community to gain a particular resource. Now moving on, so the, the, the two sort of ideas that we just talked about, sense of community and social capital, those are two aspects that are provided by being members of communities, right? So those are two elements that, that individuals gain and, and communities gain by being part of communities. Um, and societies gain as well, as, as what Putnam would say. Um, however, Communities are, are fairly complex, and I'm sure we all know this. Um, and the, the complexities include things like people being part of multiple communities, right? So you may be part of one community that's actually in conflict with another community. Um, so, uh, so I'm trying to think of a good example here. Um, hmm, I can't think of one. Well. Uh, the point is, uh, we as individuals could p potentially be part of two communities that are in conflict or, or do not necessarily get along, right? Um, and Weisenfeld has this idea of we, um, or this myth of we, and what that means is, by having such a strong sense of community, um, certain people are accepted and certain people are not. And this idea is really perpetuated among gangs, right? So you have this sort of sense of we where we are the insiders and we are one and everybody else is um, is bad or not part of of our um, of our we right and that can lead to marginalization um, it can be it can lead to a lack of lack of acceptance so at the end of this talk um, what you want to pay particular particular attention to and understand is Understanding what types of communities there, that are out there and which communities you are a part of, right? Locality-based, um, relational-based, 
Uh, at what level of analysis do communities occur and um, what do those look like, right? What, what types of communities are they? Are relational? Are they geographic? Um, what is sense of community? How has it evolved over time? Um, similarly, what is social capital? How has it evolved over time? And how does it potentially manifest across various levels of analysis? Um, and how are communities complex? Uh, how do communities work with each other, conflict with each other? Um, so those are the main ideas you want to take from this talk.